You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Survivor After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Survivor After Show. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Biggest for doing, and uh, here we are again to uh, talk about Survivor, the latest episode. What was the name of this episode? I didn't even write it down. Uh, One Arm Dude and Three Moms. <laughs> <laughs> is that really the name of it? <laughs> yes, it is. That was, Amazing. That was definitely like the best quote of the episode. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Jerry Manthe, uh, hosting this evening with my lovely co host, yes, Justin Walter. <laughs> And we just have to point out that Ryan is not here because we've decided to play Survivor on our show, and Jerry and I voted him out. We got rid of him. Bye-bye, Ryan. <laughs> Dead weight, man. He was really bad at puzzles. But I think he's going to come back from redemption next week. Perhaps. He's perhaps. pretty good on Redemption Island. Yeah. He's six, what is he, six foot Six something? foot eight, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, we do apologize for running a little bit late this evening. I got stuck in a rehearsal. I'm performing with Second City this oh, weekend. Oh, so congrats. Thank you very much. I'm very excited. Is that a one-time thing? or? Um, I am now officially part of the cast. So Jerry. I'll be popping in and out. I don't think I'll be doing it every single weekend. So multi-talented. I, you know, I'm trying. I'm keeping myself out there. I love it. <laughs> That's great. So people in L.A., they can come cheer you on and watch you. Exactly. At uh, Second City L.A. on Hollywood Boulevard, Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are five it. bucks. Um, I highly recommend, cheap. yeah, and I highly recommend you get your tickets before because it usually sells out. Oh, I bet you're so good at that. It's sketch comedy. Yeah. It's so much fun. I love it. I totally dig it. No, people don't know this, but I'm actually kind of funny. <laughs> we know it here <laughs> on AfterBuzz TV because you crack us up every week. Oh, so, Justin, before we get rolling, I want to ask you, how's your Survivor audition oh, tape going? Well, auditions are due October 17th, which is <gasps> next week. Oh my gosh! And I'm keeping it top secret because if if the details spill out, then they don't want you on the show. So just uh, know I'm applying. Okay. Well, I want to see and it. And I'm going to be mysteriously disappearing eventually. <laughs> I hope so. I do. <laughs> I hope so. Well, I want to see it so I can give it Thank a stamp you, of Jerry. Approval. Thank you, Jerry. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into the episode. Yeah. Oh. How crazy. Okay. Well, even before it started, we were getting hit up on Twitter by a lot of fans saying this is such an epic, huge episode. We can't wait to hear what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm so like, you know, when you go into an episode, getting tweets like that it's going to be something big yeah and I, know. I was so excited i can't look at my phone after what is it five o'clock east yeah. coast time when people are watching because i don't want to know what's happening yeah but yeah i kept seeing like epic epic oh you don't miss it and and even just you John, waited for me i did wait for i <laughs> i took an hour and a half nap basically <laughs> waiting for you <laughs> sitting here at the after buzz couches waiting for jerry but it was worth the wait thanks it was it worth was a the wait. great episode and even just like all the way leading up to it like knowing John was going to redemption, and that was going to be an epic battle, kind of with John and Candace. Yeah, like I there know. was just so many layers to it. As we've been saying, this whole season is all about layers. Yeah, I have to say, this season more than any other season, I literally look forward to Wednesdays again. Me too. It's yeah, me. I mean, and I've played it three times, yeah. and I'm still completely. Screwed. I, I have no idea what's going on. I'm so confused and so like intrigued and, and, and excited. And to, when we were walking in here, you said, I've played this game three times and it's still, this season is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes it fun to watch. I love it because of that. I love more layers of strategy. I love getting excited, not knowing how people are going to play in terms of it's not strictly a numbers game. We saw so much of that tonight, which we're going to talk about. It's yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, so it opens up Redemption Island. John mm -hmm. is coming in to say hi to Candace, who gets so pissed. Yes. She was so mad, you know, and then it, it was interesting that they sat there and talked about uh, Brad and, and how, how he's basically running the show. And yeah. I mean, Candace was really, really upset. And the and first thing I thought was, oh my gosh, they have to compete against each mm -hmm. other. And then I thought, oh my gosh. They're so cute together. <laughs> Is there going to be they, sex on Survivor they, for the first time? Well, I don't think there would be with Marissa there. 
Unless they're kind of kinky and into three ways. I don't know. They can walk off <laughs> in the woods. I don't think Marissa's going to go look Did for Did Rob them. and Amber have sex on Survivor? It's questionable. It's Nobody questionable. really knows for sure if they Do you did. know of anybody who's had sex on Survivor? Or uh, rumors of it? The rumor that I heard was Ozzy and... Amanda. Amanda, yes. Okay. That was the only other rumor I heard. From fans versus favorites? Yeah. Okay. So... Because that's... On these other shows, obviously, it's more likable when you're all gross and dirty. I think people are questioning whether people would actually have sex on Survivor. However, maybe However, this season... Yeah. <laughs> Some Survivor babies coming along. <laughs> Didn't Mike Scoopin tweet about that last week? He I remember did. that. Wondering if uh, nine months from now Candace is going to have a baby. Be, which would be kind of funny. Yeah. 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 Who but knows? One thing I did, I read going into the episode, Candace and John did interviews about this episode, about going up against each other on Redemption Island, which usually contestants still in the game don't do press is that correct or in the game yeah no so they're still in the game but they did press about being on redemption island against each other tonight which i found really interesting where did you find that i read an article it was i think an interview with dalton ross or dalton ross from entertainment weekly posted an article and it was basically the mentality of going into it they both said to each other let's fight our hardest let's not give it up for one another let's go you know all the way and, and in terms of one thing that i found really funny was Candace loves Marissa on Redemption Island, and she's been cuddling with Marissa for the last however days they've been <laughs> on it. But now, like, there was a struggle in the dynamic between Marissa and Candace and John. So what did they ended up doing, because they've been snuggling for warmth, was Candace was in the middle, John would, was on the outside as Big Spoon, and then Marissa was cuddling with Candace. Aww. <laughs> so there might be a three-way. Uh, oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> well, Survivor just uh, turned a whole Survivor different corner. Three-way. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I thought it was really interesting um, after we cut away from Redemption Island that night when they showed Brad uh, immediately just like going off, like uh, his, showing his cards yeah. to uh, Tina's daughter and mm -hmm. and saying, you know, yeah, I'm running the show. And, and uh, what else was he saying? I, I didn't write down exact quotes, but I just remember him like literally like belittling her saying look i'm yeah. running the show and you know and one thing that came up a couple times from that point forward was the idea of brad's idea and strategy which i find really interesting and i don't think it's smart is mm. that obviously not yeah <laughs> well to, you know you clearly know why <laughs> is that one of the reasons john had to go was because he didn't have a loved one on the other tribe and it's better to keep people in the game of loved ones on the other tribe because when it comes to emerge you can link up with those loved ones and form a bigger better alliance so you know next to go is caleb because colton's out of the game and he doesn't have a loved one if you don't have a loved one in the game you're so much more of a free agent and less you're going to make your mind up more on your own, hopefully, compared to doing something your loved one wants you to do. So I don't understand that logic, or I, I would never think of it like that. Yeah, and that's what makes this this season so duplicitous, because there's so many different ways of mm -hmm. looking at what someone could do without the loved one versus someone who has the loved one. Yeah. And that's where my mind starts spinning and smoke comes out of my yeah. ears, because I'm just like... Ah. Here's where I think you made the mistake in terms of that strategy. In his mind... He has his alliance on his tribe, and those loved ones in his alliance will come to his alliance. What he's failing to recognize is the loved ones on the other tribe might have opposing alliances to his alliance, and why are they going to go to your alliance and not your alliance members going to their alliance and going against you? So that's where I think he's making, making his big mistake. Kind of get what I'm saying? I think so. But I mean, I think, honestly, the, the biggest mistake he's making is, first of all, calling yourself <laughs> the kingpin yeah. and, and all those words that are used to describe yourself as the person running the show. Yeah. That is like Survivor 101. Never, ever admit yeah. that you're running the show. Unless you're Boston Rob and it's your fourth time and you know you're going to win. Yeah, and everyone else is in <laughs> love with you. Yeah. So the in walks Candace at Redemption oh, Island, the amazing. challenge, and flips Brad off and just gives him, I mean, Pissed she off. gave it to him. I've never seen her that angry. Like, even her freckles were red. Fired up, and I loved <laughs> seeing Candace like that. I loved it. I loved seeing her pissed off, and, and she took everyone by shock, it seemed, in terms of them just being baffled by Candace being so irate and so pissed off. Right. Which, strategically, I'm wondering, probably not the best move, because your tribe already voted you off first, and now you're pissing off everybody in the loved ones tribe. So let's say Candace does eventually return. Who's she going to turn to? 
Well, I mean, there is the flip side of that. You know? Everyone's going to wonder what is up with her, mm -hmm. and she could always form an alliance with someone and make it appear that she's angry at them. Yeah. Perhaps Brad, at some point, yeah. and her could be in an alliance and no one would ever see it coming. Or she goes, anybody who wants to go against Brad, you know I don't want to be with them, let's get together. <laughs> There's so many layers in this game. <laughs> uh, it hurts. It but hurts. I love how John in on Redemption was just kind of like, uh, yeah, because Candace, one of the accusations she made was Brad, every girl that's come off into Redemption Island has said Brad belittles them and doesn't allow them to speak and, and shushes to, them. Go to CBS.com. I'm not kidding. There's a secret scene there when Rachel gets voted off and goes to Redemption Island, and it's... Um, What's Jervis's sister? Marissa. Marissa, Marissa, Candace, and Rachel mm -hmm. all sitting down having a full blown argument about Brad. Wow. And they all start talking about how they could somehow form an alliance against Brad from Reden Redemption Island. Wow. It is a really interesting scene. And again, it like makes you realize the power of being voted off and going to this place with oh, yeah. two other people. Yeah. Like, the possibilities are endless because we don't know when they're going back in the game. And more than ever, it seems like the laundry, dirty laundry is getting aired at Redemption more than ever. More we than have ever. never seen Redemption Island take on such a big role or could take on a big role strategically in terms of going to Redemption and just laying out your dirty laundry where in the past we've had Redemption where there are a little, you know, tidbits here and there, but never like this. No. No, so the, the challenge of Redemption mm -hmm. Island is uh, some, like... So nerf ball. A nerf football that's been cored out <laughs> and run on a string with a key, and they build this amazing freaking puzzle yeah. that is probably the most epic puzzle I've ever seen on Survivor. It's it was crazy that that puzzle was used for Redemption <laughs> Island and not the the game. I guess it is the game. But yeah, that must have been a like really a puzzle. long challenge. That's all I'm yeah. gonna say is that puzzle had to have taken forever yeah. to do, and then what happens? John wins, Go figure. and then Candace comes in second, and, and we were our, rooting for him. I know, it's I know, cute. it is cute. And then you know, I think it's funny again. Jervis is coaching his niece on how to do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Fail. Like Jervis, man, you know, if you, yeah, I don't even get me started. I love you, Jervis, <laughs> but I don't understand you this season. So then, big, big immunity uh, controversy, I guess, in terms of the hidden immunity clue. So oh, yes. John gets oh. to decide who to give it to, and Candace says, let's give it to Monica. Which I didn't quite the idea, understand. I think the idea is that giving it to Monica would hopefully put a target on her back. So then if she doesn't share the clue, then they'd go after her if they have to vote someone off. So I think that's Candace's logic because she hates Brad Culpepper. So let's put a target on Monica Culpepper's back. And she was going off on Brad, you know, and Monica in terms of don't do what your husband says and all that sort of stuff. And then John did exactly what Candace said. Yeah, So totally. John gave it to Monica. They made it, the decision clearly as a team. But in most marriages, and you can, you're married, Jerry, the wife wears the pants <laughs> in the marriage. <laughs> Is that true? Um, I'm not married. I would, I would say that generally. Generally. Generally speaking is yeah. the case, but not always. Not always. But clearly in that relationship, she dictates, and then he decides whether or not it's a good <laughs> idea. I think it's a very healthy relationship yeah. we're looking at, honestly. Yeah. Um, it was really fun to watch the two of them and how they interact, um, as well as Monica and Brad. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think of Monica's decision to do what she did with the clue? Um, I, you know what? I can understand why she burned it. I I think it was a good move. Mm -hmm. It basically was saying, you know what, Candace, you screwed up. You should have given it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. If it were me, I think I would have actually given that clue to one of the girls okay. on the family tribe. Got it. Because they need that they clue. Need it. Those they girls, look like they're on the outs. They could use it. Yeah, especially knowing what she knows about Brad and, and the girls. And, and if stuff. you give it to, let's say you give it to Katie or Sierra, you're almost giving them the power to then make an alliance with someone and say, hey, I have the third clue, Caleb or Hayden or Vetus. Fetus, we also call him fetus. <laughs> I have the third clue. I shared it with Sierra. Let's say he gave it to Katie. I shared it with Sierra. I want to share this with you. You know, if we find it, you can have it and just keep us in the game. You know, yeah. something like that. It gives more power than to give it to the people that voted you off first yeah. and that you don't want to win. And yes, it was, I think, that was more of like a slap in the face than an actual. 
like yeah. helping situation. And I, and I think if Monica did keep it, she would have been smarter where John made mis the mistake of not sharing it with anyone. Yeah. Monica would have shared it, or I think she would have shared it with someone. That is obviously the smart choice in yeah. this particular season is to always share, share the it with clue. Share with alliance. Yeah, because in the past, we didn't really know who had the clue to begin yeah. with. In some cases, it was hidden so well. Yeah. You know, in very strange places at reward challenges, people were finding And it's the clue. crazy with two clues, no one's found it on the Loved Ones Tribe yet. Yet, Russell Hansen sees and he finds them without any clues. <laughs> I always have to say, yeah. like, to give, I want the Jerry looking camera. <laughs> <laughs> this one? That look. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's the thing, too, is uh, Brad actually knows what the clue was. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand why nobody's looking for it. Crazy. I this season, I think you said it. Um, it's almost like people are having to play old school style. Yeah. Where the immunity idols are not necessarily they're not really a good thing. About it. And they're not really coming mm -hmm. into play. And it's a really interesting twist. Like, it just keeps every week. It just gets it more and more interesting. It almost makes you scale back your game in a sense of, you know, so many seasons when it's not this multi layered strategy. You want that idol. You need to find that idol. That's your lifeline. But it's almost there are so many different lifelines this season because of loved ones. It, it's, it's, you have a lot of lifelines, just like who wants to be a millionaire? Dun, 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 millionaire, dun. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Phone a friend. Oh my gosh. Um, let's see. I, and I've I actually watched another. Uh, You're all over secret those secret scenes, scenes, which they're great. They're awesome, you guys. Seriously, CBS.com really like does give you a lot of good scenes that don't make the show. That sometimes I think were mm -hmm. almost key and integral parts that needed to be in the show. Mm -hmm. um, they interviewed Monica, and she explains how difficult it is to sit there and not say anything while her husband oh. is being berated by people. Yeah. Like, can, I, can, I tried to put myself in that situation while I was watching the show tonight. And I, yeah, that would be really super tough. Yeah. But I loved, and Jervis, I this love you for this. This was the best quote of the night, I think, Jervis. besides the title of the show. Yeah, exactly. Best quote. Jervis was so right mm -hmm. by bringing up like, hey, you know what? It, you know your husband in the real world, but you don't know Brad from Survivor. Mm -hmm. And he might be the villain on the other side. Yeah. And, like, just that realization of, like, if I had played and my husband on the other side was now hated by everyone. Yeah. And I know him as this cuddly, sweet creature. <laughs> I can imagine that would really mess oh, with yeah. you. And I mean, the, the secret scene that they show, she, she describes pretty detailed just how... It makes her feel sick. Oh, yeah. You know? I cannot imagine. And she has to, usually, if you're on a tribe that wins immunity three or four times, like they did tonight, in a row, <sighs> you are sitting pretty. In in the in Palau, when they the entire tribe took out, you know, Stephanie and Bobby John's tribe, they went eight or nine or ten immunities in a row. You sit pretty. In this season, even when you're winning four in a row, you are not sitting pretty because every game, every week, Monica still has to play the game because everyone's after her husband. So it's crazy to think she's just as much on the hot seat for winning immunity, even though they won immunity. I just they have to defend their loved one. It's so insane. When they really have no idea what actually is being said in terms of what they get from the duels. Yeah. You talk about a complete mental mind, you know, bleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't I can't imagine. Like it's already hard enough when you're out there, the mental uh wear and tear that you experience. But this is like to a whole nother level yeah. that I can't even imagine. Yeah, Jervis was right on. I love that that comment. It was great. It was it put everything in a very interesting perspective. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, what if your loved one is the villain? <laughs> and everybody hates them. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, that's it's a, great. That's really tough. Um, so then, let's see, we get... Um, the Coconut Bandits. Oh, good God. Yeah, what was that all about? Um, let's see, I, I put down Monica. You were so confused by the Coconut Bandits. Uh, yeah, I kept going, why? <laughs> why, why, why? Why would you tap coconuts and drink the coconut juice? I'm, let me just explain something to you people, all right? <laughs> Too much coconut juice is a really bad thing. Why? Because we don't have toilet paper. And it is... Um, Okay. How do I say this nicely? 
you'll crap your brains out, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and you have no toilet paper. So I don't understand why they think it's so cool to go and off and drink all this coconut juice. It was interesting when Tyson and Jervis went and did that. So they're putting holes in the coconuts and then making it look like animals are the ones drinking their coconut milk. Wait till somebody picks up that, yeah, that with the crowbar, crowbar and, and smells then, the and coconut. And then goes, wait a minute, that's like this... <laughs> this, it's like a key in a lock. What's and it was the only moment we've really saw Laura B., <laughs> Rupert's wife, had two moments tonight. One was kind of finding the coconuts, but it wasn't really that important. But what it did segue into was the fact that Tyson brought up the idea of he trusts Jervis. Jervis is his man this season. Because they don't have loved ones They don't anymore. have loved ones on the other tribe, so they got to trust each other. And then he says, and we're with Aris. And if we merge and Vetus is still left in the game, then Vetus will come to us and he'll be with Aris. There's, again, he's making the same assumption that Brad Culpepper is making, that the loved ones are going to come to your side and not your alliance going to their side. Right. He's not thinking, wait a minute, what if Aris goes with Vetus into a different alliance, but they're assuming Vetus is going to come to their alliance, which why would Vetus do that if he's in a great alliance on his tribe? Not to mention, let's not forget, Aris and Vetus are incredibly competitive, yeah. and who's to say that they're even going to play the game I don't think they will. Together. I don't know about those two. Yeah. They're, they're a pair that, truthfully, there is so much animosity yeah about all the years yeah. of, of the way they treated each other. And again, go to the secret scene. There's a great scene great. Where, where Vetus explains that Aris, like in, in last week's challenge, with where they mm -hmm. were pushing each other off with pillows, yeah. he said now, he said Aris has 30 years of all this pent-up stuff yeah. that he's been holding in that came out in that pillow, and that's what made him win. He said, I don't have that for my brother. Yeah. He never did anything to me. You know, that's wrong that I feel like I have to fight against. And I, I can relate in a sense of the brother dynamic, which is different because I, I, I have an identical twin brother. and Who I still want to see. I know. And I'm, he was supposed to come here. He couldn't make it last week when we had Colton, <laughs> which was fine. But we aren't best friends. Everyone assumes that identical twins are best friends. We have a brother rivalry. We're very competitive with each other. We grew up competing with each other. So we love each other at the core. But in terms of competitions like this, I can totally relate to if they don't team up, they don't work together. Would you be able to do that to your own brother? Your own I would twin be able to brother? vote him off. My fa we play reality games with friends and family. <laughs> like we we play full scale. Like yeah, but that's not real. It's that's not, not the for real. a yes. million dollars. That's what I'm saying. We vote each other off when it's not even for a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> we do it for pride. We don't even play for money. You know, we play weekend versions of Survivor and blindside and blackstab each other. It's ridiculous. But I can understand where it's like a, a wife and husband pair really can't do that if, unless they want a divorce. And but that a, could happen. But a sibling rivalry that withstands competition and the bond that will always be there as a sibling it can happen. So I can definitely see that they may not work together or they may work together. You know, we'll see, but it's. I like that rivalry. I like that story because it is different than all the other stories. It's different than the mother daughter. It's different than the the niece and then the uncle. It's one where it's really like these two could really go against each other. Whereas the the boyfriend girlfriends and husband and wives they probably won't. Yeah, um, the whole Cat so. Hayden thing is kind of. Well, I, I watched then. their secret scenes. Cat was all, "I'm so in love with Hayden, and I would really maybe switch with him in Redemption if he got there, because I just realized now that I'm in love with this man, how could you not love him?" And Hayden was so much more calculated in his love secret scene. This was two <laughs> weeks ago. He was like, "You know, Cat and I." are dating <laughs> and he's slowly <laughs> thinking like you know i might have to back i might her. have to back and I will. <laughs> <laughs> so those are interesting secrecies as well yeah and but it looks like on twitter they're still together you know she's always you know tweeting uh i love hayden and all that sort of stuff so oh, it's unless just, it's, the it's biggest like middle ploy. school yeah so yeah, i wonder if they like carve their name in a tree Probably on the island so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me back to the huge epic scene between um, Candace and John when they were finally alone on Redemption Island. Yes. It was so cute. I swear, you guys are adorable. I, I'm <laughs> not kidding. Like, not only they are you both. They might get a spinoff series. They're so attractive. Some, like, doctor spinoff series. Candace, I can see it happening. I want to know what your workout regimen is. Like, she is get to me. <laughs> she looks so good. When she was in that water fishing, she was, like, survivor woman. Yeah. Yeah. She looks great. And it just seems so cute. It was like they're, they're a free honeymoon. Yeah. And they're like, this isn't really how I wanted to play the game, but... 
We'll take what we can get. So here's the question, Jerry. You know, we were talking about earlier. They're on Redemption Island alone. This is a yeah, perfect no, opportunity. Alone. This is where if some survivor sex is going to happen, this is where it's going to happen. I bet it did. You think it did? I'm going to ask. <laughs> Candace, let me know. Just now we need dirt. like one of them to eventually get voted <laughs> off so no. we can ask. <laughs> no, I Or would, just find out at the finale. I would. Yeah, well, I'm totally going to ask there. Be prepared. But yeah. uh, I would love it if they both made it through all the Redemption Island challenges. And at the end, they bring back. A couple. I think they're going to bring back two. Oh, I, I would. I think they would too. I think they will. I, I think it's probably the best move to bring back two. It'll stir three. it up a lot more. Yeah, and it gives people a chance to build an alliance mm -hmm. out there at Redemption Island. Yeah. Oh, I would love to see you guys come back, Jerry. Uh, if they if they have a baby out there, what should they name that baby? Uh, <laughs> I don't. I, I we'll don't come know. back to I'm you. Not, on that. I'm not. Yeah, let me think about that. One. <laughs> <laughs> let me see what the fish are. Jeff and, Probst? Nah. No, no. <laughs> um, yeah. So then, uh, I guess I wrote some notes here about how funny it was that now they're calling uh, blindsides on the loved one side, getting johned. Oh, I love that too. <laughs> getting johned. Oh Please don't gosh. john me. <laughs> don't get johned. You don't want to get johned. <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Um, so yeah, then that brings us to the, um, immunity, the immunity challenge with Tyson who decides to play the game, even though he only has one arm and, and uh, this was a physical challenge. Like the first part was rowing in a boat to pick up five huge boxes. boxes and those boxes then had to be put into a staircase with a puzzle and then Gate it was the mini you. version of the one I did yeah, in Heroes of Villains. Yeah, you did that one in Heroes of Villains. Mini version. Mini version, the cute version. <laughs> <laughs> and then after you did that, then you got to put a puzzle together, which gave you a combo code to open a combo to get a key to then get a flag up. But the first half of it was extremely physical. Totally physical. And they chose, that was the... the and you and I are on the couch going... Tyson, what are you yeah. doing? Why would you do Tina that? And Kat, no arm. Tina and Kat set out, and Tyson, with one arm in a sling, yeah. did the challenge. People that stuck out in that challenge was Rupert's wife stuck out in that challenge for being really good in the water and yeah. really kind of athletic in terms of getting down in there and untying those boxes very quickly. And when she was doing that, you were even saying, like, oh, that's right. She's a total outdoors woman. And she's a swimmer. And she's a she swimmer. She said at the beginning of the season that she's really strong. I guess she swam on a swim team yeah. or something professionally. And she, she showed she was great there. Yeah. And Which, let me tell you something, people. T untying knots is already hard enough, but doing it underwater <sighs> while holding your breath with your eyes open. <sighs> and then knowing, you know, that you've got this box you have to, it's like. <laughs> It's a lot harder than you would think. Yeah. And that was just a tiny part of that challenge. It was a tiny part. And on the loved one side, Brad Culpepper just dominated in terms of getting in there and getting those boxes up. And then they made this stupid mistake. They kept tipping over. And then finally, when they were in the lead, they tipped the boat over and two or three boxes started floating away. And it was just like, that's when we just were like, oh, come on. I want the loved ones to win a challenge. I know. It is getting really annoying just watching... The returnees win and win and win. We want to see who are they going to go after, who are they going to vote off. Let's get some strategy on that returnee side instead of just their kumbaya. We never have to vote anyone and just cry for our loved ones having to vote people. Yeah. And, and it just... Ugh. You know what? It, it's funny because on this episode, they really made Tyson look like he was playing up his shoulder injury, mm -hmm. but his shoulder was really messed up. Another secret scene was uh, Jeff Probst, with Tyson and um, medical, the medical uh, person. I forget her name. I love her so much. <laughs> Australia. I mean, what an amazing job, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you got to be a doctor on anything, yeah. sign me up for Survivor. Yeah. So she's literally giving him the the whole exam, and he couldn't even lift his oh, arm. Wow. Like he was, he want you could see the pain Oof. on his face. It was bad. Yeah. So and he said it's allowing him to be lazy at camp. <laughs> yeah. Good for him. Yeah. It's a lot of work to get wood and water yeah. all the time it's horrible but then you know he did that challenge yeah. and he did really good he did really so well. it looks like he's gonna work through yeah. the pain he's gonna be fine yeah you know and in that challenge we again saw laura moret versus sierra in a puzzle challenge oh uh, why why did she do that again mother versus daughter and laura m you are amazing at puzzles she just dominates unbelievable dominates yeah and I she even said in her in her confessional Sierra will never beat me in a challenge. 
and she's <laughs> like, I want her to win. I just want her to win. I, I want her to beat me. But, you know, I good for her. She's not doing less than she would normally do yeah. because it's her daughter. Because that, can you imagine what that would do to your strategy if people knew that gone. you would throw something because you gone. wanted your loved one to Goner. win? Yeah. Goner. So... Again, that that puts a really interesting spin yeah. on people's relationships. I want to see like Cat and Hayden go up against yeah, each other. Yeah, let's like, get some variety. Every week we're seeing the same matchups. Yeah, people that are a little more volatile. Yeah. you know, like that. That's an interesting combination. Of so this season has been a lot of challenges where it's very physical and then very mental. And it seems lots like, of puzzles. It seems like it always will come down to the puzzle. In your experience, Jerry. Does it basically always come down to the puzzle? Will a, a big enough, I guess, physical lead? Like, it never seems like the leads are that big after a physical part of the challenge, but it does always come down to Is that what you've experienced, that it usually does come down to the puzzle? If it's coupled together, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, usually. I mean, I don't know. I've been involved with some incredibly physical yeah. challenges that I, I don't know apparently nowadays they would never allow those challenges. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's what I was told by the guy that really? like, checks them. He said, oh, yeah, that stuff you guys did in Australia, <laughs> we would never allow that now. <laughs> Which one for, like, do you have an example of one? Oh, yes. Um, jumping off a cliff. Yes. <laughs> that was like that was a 70-foot cliff. Oh, my gosh. At least, if not higher. Yeah. And that was the scariest thing I've ever done in my whole life, and I will never do it again. I can still remember Roger. Who didn't know how to swim? Yeah. Yes. No, it, that that particular challenge I asked the the stunt guy about, and I said, he was like, oh, yeah, no, we would never allow that now. Wow. Yeah. So they, they do test all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I, I think anytime there is a physical challenge that leads into a puzzle, it's always going to come down to the puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. Because the physical part with a team, you can, it's pretty evenly matched. Yeah. Despite the fact that the the loved ones tribe yeah. is, should be dominating, and that's what the best quote or the one of the second best quotes of the best quote besides what Jervis said was Hayden saying, "We got beat by a one arm guy and three moms," <laughs> <laughs> which just goes to show you never underestimate a woman because she's a mom. <laughs> Matter of fact, you should probably look out for your mom next time you want to wrong somebody. <laughs> so funny, but it is true. They are just dominating, and it. Looking at the beginning of the season, I, I'm guilty of thinking that loved one tribe is just going to dominate because they had such big guys, such brawn, and it just goes to show that one experience does play a role. I think. Yeah, I think it really is. And two, it does not come down to just physical. Absolutely not. No, it's it's so, the whole thing. Sometimes is just it's overwhelming. Like. Mm -hmm. it, if we go back to sitting here with Colton last week, which I do want to talk about yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, and when we do have Troy Zan in, which he apologizes, we, we had some scheduling conflicts tonight, and we apologize to Troy Zan for not getting him on. Yeah, we, I was looking forward to having you on, Troy Zan. He, when he does come on, he's going to speak on behalf of what Colton said about him. Right, because Colton claimed that Troy Zan said he was fine with Colton quitting that it was okay with him. Mm -hmm. And apparently there's a lot of pregame stuff that Troy Zan wanted to share with us. Love it. That totally contradicts what Colton said last week. <sighs> now we're gonna get that. Yeah, see the thing is, do we finish this? Do we finish this episode? No, we got the biggest part coming up, but we could go real quick into what is Yeah, this? should yeah, we yeah. talk about this now? Because yeah, it's yeah. pretty juicy. Yeah, and yeah. I think you guys out there love this Ooh, kind of stuff I love it. anyway. And then we'll get back to the most epic, one of the most epic tribals ever. Ever. Yeah. Um yeah, the, last week, I know we were very, it was, let me just say, it was a little awkward watching the episode with Colton, because up until that point, we were all very, you know, angry at the idea of Colton mm -hmm. quitting, and I have a real problem with people that quit. Me I too. always have, and I know you do too, yeah, for it came out. your own reasons, <laughs> yeah, and we promised him we weren't going to be too hard, and I think we were almost um, a little soft in some ways. Because I know there were things he said. I went back and watched last yeah, week's episode. Yeah, that were BS. <laughs> that were a little contradictory. Yeah. And I went and watched Parvati's after show, and oh, he basically yeah. mirrored all the things that he said to us. Yes. That he had said to her. Oddly enough, we had the exact same reactions as Parvati did. Yeah. <laughs> which I thought was interesting. Yeah. But I want to know what Troy Zan knows. Yeah. Well, and the other thing that was interesting to do, and it, you know, it was great having Colton on here. We're not going to say that 
you know, that was awesome having him here. He He's charming. It was great. It was great having him yeah. here. But he also did write this huge Facebook post that, like, outlined that everything he did was the strategic decision, that it was well thought out and masterminded just for Caleb's game. And it's just We like, don't believe you, Colton. It's just kind of like, come on, Colton. Is this after the fact? I mean, it came off as very, like, how it's written Calculated. and everything. And, and even how he talks about it. But it's just kind of like... It, it's hard to believe that that's 100% true. Right. And I understand that you are trying desperately to justify things for yourself. And that's fine. That's also part of the survivor experience is that, you know, you do, you go through the coulda, woulda, shouldas. Yeah. You wake up with cold sweats in the middle of the night. You you relive moments that you wish you had made a different choice. This is yep. all normal stuff. Yeah. Um, the best thing you can do is just own up to the truth mm -hmm. because there are other people involved in this. Mm -hmm. There's two tribes and, and various other people along yeah. the way. So I'm really interested to see what Troy's end says. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, I still, I, I mean, in. I love I love the Colton that we met. Yeah. I, I really did enjoy having him here, but I think we were a little soft on him. I think I was the only I was the, <laughs> I was the one who was the hardest on him. And but you it was like even that bad. but it was like Ryan who brought him in, so you know that sort of thing. And you were being very like nice, and you were almost like in therapist mode. So I understand that I was. And I was the one I was that, in my mommy mode. Yeah, you were in mom mode. <laughs> and you know some of our fans and comments on YouTube, and, and that's you know people thought it was a well balanced, fair interview, and we brought up good points and arguments. And some people thought we were a little soft. Some people thought we were too hard. So what? it's gonna be yeah. There were comments on YouTube. Some people thought we were too hard on him Aww. so yeah, that's what we do we give our opinion we do our thing and yeah give us your love give us your constructive criticism i don't want to say hate but yeah. give us your constructive criticism yeah, no, and we, don't need hate. we love doing it you know uh but yeah it was interesting to go back and watch it and uh i definitely stand by everything i said to him in terms of troy's and isn't the only one who should be upset he quit yeah fans and and people who just watch the show and anyone who's wanted to ever be on should be upset too yeah so let us know like go on uh youtube and make some comments and stuff let us know if you guys want to know what troy's and has to yeah. say because I'm, 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 I'm definitely going to talk to Troy Zen on a personal level, yeah. just one on one. But if you guys are interested in knowing what we'll he says, we'll get him on. And great, that's a good place to do it. <sighs> okay, so post immunity loss. Back. <laughs> 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 so back to this episode. Um, tribal council. Well, before, well, even leading up, there was only quick moments leading up. <sighs> So the guys, this I thought it was funny. I was so confused again. I was just like, okay, oh, yeah. Caleb, so why would Sierra, you do that? So Sierra is like, well, we lost another challenge. And the routine is the guys say, let's go get water, a.k.a. Oh, let's yeah. go strategize. And the girls <laughs> say, okay, we'll make rice, a.k.a. figure out how we're going to stay alive. <laughs> It's the most non-discreet aligning and strategizing ever. I like, love it. Let's go get water and <laughs> wink, like, wink, wink. wink. <laughs> but and this let's time, let's go make rice. Wink, wink. But this time, Brad Culpepper, who's usually always with the boys, decided to stay back and talk to the girls and say, let's go after Caleb. He doesn't have a loved one on the other tribe. Caleb, Caleb, Caleb. And that was a big crack. Big Huge crack. Huge crack. Heard worldwide. Big Earthquakes crack. Earthquakes on Survivor. That's right. <laughs> so then the boys are saying, hey, I think it was Vetus that came back and said, hey, Brad, are you going to come? And and K uh, Caleb was and Caleb was worried. Yeah. yeah. Why is he staying behind with the Why girls? Why is he staying behind? And then Brad shows up, and the first thing he says, "Oh, I I stay behind, and I, I'm making them think we're voting out Caleb, but it's gonna be Sierra, right? It's gonna be Sierra." So that's getting the wheels spinning. All the guys are saying Sierra, Sierra, Sierra. She's done two mental challenges of puzzles, and she's failed against her mom. Let's just you know keep these guys together, get Sierra. It's a done deal. We didn't see any other strategizing. They go to tribal council. Yeah, it was very quick. Very quick. So quick that we were so confused as to who and, might be going. And I said, to, I said to Jerry, I was like, Jerry, they didn't show anyone strategizing against Brad Culpepper. That means he can't go, right? And I'm like, totally not. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it when you get me with the editing. I gotta say. Well, I love and it, it was in the was because it <laughs> seemed like there really probably wasn't a lot of strategizing against Brad Culpepper because it all went down a tribal council. Yeah. I mean, there was hints of it last week and then this week, little hints of it, but there yeah. was definitely no like, hey, Brad's a contender for going home tonight. Yes. So <sighs> it it seemed like it unfolded 
with Jeff's lining of uh, lines of questioning that opened up Pandora's box, if you want to say, of going after Brad and constantly asking him like. Everyone at everyone at the duel is calling you out, you know. Monica's constantly having to defend you. Everyone, you know, and he's defending himself on the tribe. And then what was the question? He said basically like, oh, he made Brad basically give up his idea that if you don't have a loved one on the other tribe, you're not as important, even though Brad was still voting Sierra. He said that. Classic Jeff Probst brilliance. Mm-hmm make people show their cards, put doubt in everyone's mind about what somebody's actually going to do. Another Survivor 101 <laughs> mistake. Don't show Jeff your cards. Yeah. And don't, you know, if he asks you a question that's going to reveal something that's going on in your mind yeah. that you should keep to yourself, yeah. keep it to yourself. So, Jerry, so Brad goes in telling the guys we're voting Sierra out. Jeff Probst, if you're Brad Culpepper, Jeff Probst says to you, all right, you guys, you know, you're voting Sierra out. So, Brad, you know, is there value in keeping someone who doesn't have a loved one on the other tribe, or should you get rid of them? What do you say, Jerry? You know what you believe, but what should well, Brad have I... said? Wow, Jeff, I never thought of that until just now. <laughs> but, no, I would probably stick to my original idea. <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> Can we add, like, to our video, sparkle on Jerry's smile? I mean, come on. Don't tell him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I've thought about that a lot, actually. I'm thinking about it right now. I'm Does... thinking about how amazing it would be as king of uh, Survivor to uh, vote off the guy that does not have a loved one. <laughs> Caleb, that's what we're talking about, so, right? <laughs> so does that come from, Jerry, does that, now I'm being fair as a viewer, does that answer come from experience? Or does that come from just loving the game? What, my answer? Yeah, because you played the game three times. You just don't tell Jeff what your <laughs> plans are. You don't tell him where your head's at. You don't tell him what you're thinking. You have to censor yourself, and you have to be quick about it. Yeah. Because he does like to ask questions now like more than ever. He's a lawyer out there. He's tricky. And I originally read, yeah. like, just because I know a lot about Jeff, because I've read about his, you know, his life. He wanted to go to law school, so he's kind of like a lawyer. But oh. He, he chose not to go to law school and go into hosting. That's what he did. But he did go to law school No, at he all? didn't. He was thinking about going into law school. Well, but that then, doesn't count then. But he's like the lawyer of Survivor. <laughs> he's the Survivor lawyer. He is totally like a lawyer in so, some But ways. even, okay, so you not only don't want to show Jeff that you think that, you don't but want why else would you say that in front of Caleb? I why don't. Why would you say that? Another huge crack. Huge crack. It's like the earthquake happened. The, the, the earth was cracked. And now he just dropped half of the crack in, into the, the great abyss. So going into tribal, it seemed like Sierra was going to go home and by a 4-2 or two And vote. maybe Caleb. Possibly. Maybe Caleb, you know. Who really knew? Who knew? But. Caleb. Caleb. Wow, dude. What do you think of his move? So what did he do? And what do you think I of it? I believe he made Colton proud is what I think. Because <laughs> yeah. I was actually very shocked at his balls. His, I mean, seriously, that. There have been a very a big move. huge, and there's been, I was part of one. There have been very few times at tribal council where there is a move mm -hmm. that is so huge yep. that happens totally in the moment yes. at tribal council that can completely change the game. Yeah. And this was one of them. It, it, it reminded me of the tribal council where poverty brought out two idols and gave them to you and Sandra. That was pretty big, but even bigger than that and highly um, underappreciated mm -hmm. or, or underlooked at by very, yeah. very many people was the moment in Heroes and Villains when I'm sitting there next to or in front of Russell, we're going to vote off Rupert. Everybody's just like done with Rupert. We're, we're finished. And then Danielle decides to gush, cry, go on and on about what a great friend Parvati is to her and that there's they yeah. have a relationship that nobody else could possibly understand. And I felt Russell sit up yeah. like this because suddenly he was threatened and there was this perfect alliance of three people that I had been battling with since day one yeah. who now had a crack. Yeah. And when I when I when Russell leaned over and said, vote Danielle. <laughs> I remember this warm sensation 
<laughs> taking over my body. Did you have an orgasm? <laughs> It was pretty damn close. <laughs> I had like Russell gave you an orgasm. Oh God! Is that yeah. the headline here? I never. Oh, let's not think of it that way, please, please. Bleach for my eyes. Bleach for my eyes. I'm tainting the moment. I uh, apologize. You ruined it. Keep going. Keep you ruined going. it, Justin. So I'm. I feel like little prickles on my chicken skin. You know, I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, this is it. Okay, my personal. Yeah. What I wanted was to get rid of Rupert. Yeah. Right. Personally, that was my choice. But here was this opportunity. How could I not take that opportunity? And everybody out there was like, oh, Russell got Jerry to do what he wanted. <laughs> Russell can do whatever he wants. He tells people what to do. And Russell's like, see, look, I am powerful. I make people do what I want them to do. Right? No, I did what I wanted to do, which was break apart a three-person alliance that I couldn't crack. Yeah. So... Big Those moves kind of at tribal, and that changed the entire game. That is yeah. the only reason that I made it as far in yeah. that game as possible. So that is why, when Caleb decided to sit up and look at everybody and say, "I'm voting for Brad, and I don't care what any of you guys do," crazy. But right now is the opportunity to do it. Which then the girls clearly are like, "This is our chance. We can force a tie if those other guys keep it." Yep. And. And then oh. Brad looks at Vetus and says, you're not going to change your vote. And he's like, no, I'm not changing my vote. And then clearly, obviously, with Hayden, the same conversation. And then Caleb forced a 3-3 tie. Then they re-vote. And... A tie. That hasn't even happened in a long yeah, time. a tie. We haven't seen a tie. And they re-voted. And then Vetus changed his vote, which we don't know why. Yeah, we don't. And not only am I interested to find out why, but I also thought it was interesting that Hayden was even going to change i don't know if you noticed or not he was drenched in sweat oh yeah that guy was on fire he like, was nervous he was like what am i going yeah. to do and i mean i thought it was really endearing that he stood there with his vote and giggled yeah you know he's like ah oh, nuts you know so do you th i mean clearly a huge move by caleb huge taking out brad culpepper the the leader of the, the tribe. The king of the tribe. The king of the tribe. <laughs> and completely turning that tribe upside down. The game probably upside down in a way that if Brad would have stayed, it would have been a completely different game. He could return. We'll see what happens. But Caleb made one of the biggest moves, clear the biggest move of the season so far. Absolutely. I mean, we've seen blindsides, all that. And to do it right at Tribal Council, props to Caleb. Was it the best move, Jerry? Um... I don't know yet. I, I would have to. My initial instinct is, yes, it was a great move because he, I, I think Brad was a, a, a formidable uh, opponent mm -hmm. in, in physical challenges once the merge happens. Yeah. The problem, obviously, is that that tribe is now very weak. Yeah, that tribe is just going to keep losing. But they weren't winning with him either. Yeah. And that's always something that people look at, too. You're like, well... You know, you could argue, oh, we need yeah. the tribe to stay strong. But well, it was. And, it, and, it, and it's interesting because it seems like even from the preview for next week, Caleb's now, he's taking the The throne. king of the tribe. He's now thinking, I have the girls on my side. I could go back to the boys. I'm now running this tribe. Never say you're running the tribe. No. But it's crazy. In that move, Caleb became the most valuable player of in terms of strategically on that tribe. Whatever happened to that, actually? Player of the week. Oh, who? That's not, they're not doing that anymore. Oh, yeah, they aren't. Because I'll tell you what, Caleb, he would hands get it. down, dude, you got player of the week We'll see week. in the long run. And, and I think one of the reasons why it's a good move for Caleb is because if you have the leader of your tribe who's constantly saying, we got to keep the people who have loved ones, you're a target. You're at the bottom of the totem pole. And I loved it. He recognized he was at the bottom of the totem pole. He recognized in that deal with Brad around, he was one of the lower men on the totem pole. So he actually did something that people in Survivor and these shows never really typically do, is make a big, bold move early. Yeah. We're only in week four, people. Yeah. And that, I love that. I love he had the guts to make a big move. For Caleb, it was the best move possible. I'm impressed, yeah. and I, I did not see that coming at all because he's so he's been so understated this season so far. They don't really show him a lot. He's yeah. very in the background. He just you know he's likable, and that's what we said Ooh. to Colton last week. 
Caleb seems so likable. And we've been talking, you know, when we're watching this show, we think the people who don't have loved ones, they're the ones who are in the better position. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of that catch-22. And he's in a, he's probably in a good position now. Yeah, because... Unless he lets the power go to his head. Right. And he could always try to scoop up other people that don't have loved yeah. ones. You know, I think that that's an interesting alliance in itself. Yeah. Um, people who are looking to find other people they can trust. Oh, the, the lost souls. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't... I, I, I really love Caleb. I mean, and he's, God, he's so different from Colton. <laughs> it's so strange. Like, when he talks, he's just, he's so, you know, very soft spoken. Yeah. And, man, those two together still. It's crazy. You guys, when you talk about opposites attracting, uh -huh. that is totally. Yeah. But, but you made such a valid point last week, and I can't, I haven't been able to shake that actually thinking about it. Um, how Colton may have completely destroyed yeah. Caleb's chance of winning a million dollars just because, you know, nobody's going to want to give Caleb a million dollars knowing that yeah, it's, it's going to go to Colton, too. I still think of it like ah. even the title, the title of Caleb winning the title of Survivor is associated with Colton. Yeah. And a true fan of the show would not want. It, it sucks because if, if if Caleb keeps playing the game, he keeps playing and ultimately does deserve to win. It really sucks that Colton's decision could tarnish that win or tarnish his game in the longer run. It's it's a bummer. We'll it's, see. And that, you know, I think that that is a huge learning lesson for Colton if that does in fact happen. Mm -hmm. That what he thought was like no big deal. The, the, the mastermind it, strategic decision to get Caleb to win. And if Caleb does win, you know, we'll see. Well, maybe we'll be the ones laughing at ourselves. You know, I'm thinking about this now i'm just thinking about all the things that colton said and <laughs> i'm wondering gosh i wonder if caleb does make it all the way to the end just to be defeated by colton's horrible decision or the the thing is let's say caleb does win then colton's going to take partial credit for it that's what i don't like because the way he's setting it up is he strategically made a decision to put colton in a, i mean caleb in a better position to win so if caleb ultimately wins then colton's going to take credit for strategically quitting to make him go further yeah so well, either way all, colton comes out on top the way colton's talking we, about it. we all know that that's bull anyway because yeah. he was there for what seven days you don't have time to think like that in seven days <laughs> he didn't even think about the fact that his choice was going to affect yeah, his, it was funny when it, it dawned on him here when yeah. I brought up that He's point. He's like, oh, I never thought about that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's probably yeah. one you should have thought of. <laughs> so, Caleb, I guess I guess since CBS isn't giving Player of the Week, you'd give it to Caleb, huh? Oh, for this week, absolutely. Crazy. I would totally give it to Caleb. That was the ballsiest move. What did he say? He's got big kahunas. Yeah, Co big kahunas. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it. the teaser for next week is, is really interesting. Um, of course, we close out the episode <laughs> where Brad... Shows up at Redemption oh, Island and waves the white flag. And, and I'm even looking forward just to seeing those three compete on Redemption Island next I week. I don't even want to see them compete so much as just hang out for a little while in the yeah. same space. <laughs> and, even, and even we see a quick tease of Monica saying, can I take your position? I will bet, I would bet you, and we already, there's no way Brad is going to let Monica switch with him. No way. No way. Way. I can't see that being a good move just because no the way. returnees tribe has this preconceived idea already yes. of Brad and what he is based on everyone's reaction to him at and Redemption. Honestly, do we think Brad P Culpepper is the type of guy that is going to let his wife take the bullet for him on Survivor? No. no. He's going to rise up to be the man in the situation and say, honey, you stay and play the game. I'm here because of my actions. I don't know if he'll eloquently say this, but I'm here because of my actions. I'll I'll survive and come back and be, meet up with you later. It's going to be one hell of Can't a wait. match. Cannot wait. Three physically fit, dominating type people. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, it's like, you know, I don't know, American Gladiators. Let the countdown for next week begin. <laughs> See? I don't think I've ever been this excited. Body waiting and excited. I'm so excited Can't for wait. every week's episode. Love it. Can't wait. Do we have time tonight for Ryan's Twitter T? Did he oh, say no? He would... So we were gonna have Ryan call in with his Twitter T, and before we went live, I texted him and said, "Are you gonna? We're gonna call you, and you're gonna do it." Uh, no, I can't. No. Ah, Ryan. 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 This is why we voted him off. He's on Redemption Island with no He's cell phone service. Out of here. He's gonna lose that challenge and not return. <laughs> so I guess we'll just wrap it up. Yeah. And thank you guys for watching. Go to iTunes. Give us a bunch of comments. Let us know what you think. 
Um, Justin, where can people find you? Uh, on Twitter, Justin F. Walter and JustinWalter.com. And you know that on YouTube, people are calling you the queen of Survivor, by the way. Yeah, me? on our on our page. So Little where me? can they find the queen of Survivor? Oh my God, please does that mean I'm getting voted out? <laughs> I hope not. Um, you guys can find me on Twitter at, at Jerry Manthe, and for anything Jerry, just go to JerryManthe.com. You can see everything. And if there. you're in LA, go see her on Sunday at Second City. Yes, Sunday 7:30, Second City, LA, on Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, tickets are five bucks. Go online, buy your tickets there now because they will sell out. Love it. Yay! Woo! What a great episode. So we'll see you next week. Yeah. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.